Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So there's so much that I want to discuss in this video and I'm going to try and stay focused on about five or six key points that I really want to cover. Meghan and Harry hosted the Times 100 talks and there were so many revelations that we got to witness during the speech. One thing that I really saw was the frustration in Harry's face as Meghan began to bang on about online toxicity, online noise, etc, etc. So I'm going to put some pictures in this video as I'm talking and you will see the way in which Harry's face changes from being quite authoritative and in control to looking quite distressed and worried about what Megsy was about to say. And he just looked as though he's sick and tired of her voice. He's sick and tired of this relationship. And he's sick and tired of the position that they're always in. They're always trying to achieve the impossible. And a lot of people have picked this up. And a lot of people have said that Harry looks incredibly unhappy. And that's definitely what I saw. As soon as she began to really go in, and this was towards the beginning of the talk, on the way in which they are basically always being slated online, he slumped back into the seat and he looked miserable. He looked very unsure and very uncertain and like he just wanted to get up walk out and watch a rugby match to be honest because we know that Harry is a big sports fan and he absolutely loves rugby and he's sacrificed a lot for this train wreck of a relationship. Another revelation that I found quite interesting was when he began to compare a situation to a broken down car with all the lights going off and smoke coming out. And that was definitely a metaphoric comparison to the state of their relationship. We know that their brand is falling apart. Their public image is down the toilet. And they are in a crisis right now. They do not have likability. They can't figure out a way to censor us from speaking out and being very vocal about how we feel they have acted and their lack of gratitude towards the royal family. He began to go on and on about driving this car and the way in which in the olden days you could have pulled the car over, popped the bonnet, but now there's this veil and you can't really solve the actual issue. And I think it was a metaphoric comparison because what he's basically saying is that in the olden days, royals could have done A, B, C and D and pretty much got on a plane, run off and there would have been no more paparazzi and minute to minute updates as to where they've gone, what they're doing and they could have rushed it under the rug. But now the veil, which is the shield that is stopping them from actually solving the problem, which would be censorship and to stop people talking like myself and the journalists and the tabloids and everything that comes with it can't easily be washed away because we have a thing called the internet. And we also have a thing called freedom of speech, which is an inconvenience to this couple. They do not like the fact that the low down peasants have freedom of speech and that they can express themselves and form communities and write blogs and convene on social media to express their disdain and disliking for Meghan and Harry's self-centered actions. And you can see the frustration. It's definitely causing issues in their marriage now. Everything has been high pressured, high stress, and it's all been about change and lack of gratitude and wanting more. Megan, no matter how much money she gets, no matter what postcode she's in, she just moans. She's just miserable. That's what she is. She's pretty much a miserable toxic draining character that's how she comes across to me and it's quite tragic because harry has been so gullible and he's gotten wrapped up in this alluring facade that she clearly put on but i can see that the cracks are now appearing and the veil is beginning to come off and he's seeing this woman for what she really is she has essentially 
and a lot of people said this, they believe that Meghan has ruined Harry's life. And I think he was a willing participant. I don't think that he initially thought Meghan was ruining his life. But I think now he realises that his life was a lot more easier and a lot simpler without the drama that comes with this woman. So there's an article by The Sun and it is titled Meghan and Harry Latest News, Prince Deeply Unhappy in Royal Marriage to a Political Activist. I'm not sure if I would brand Meghan as a political activist. I think Candice Owens is a political activist and, you know, an actual politician. But I think she's a wannabe political activist. But what she's seeking, which is censorship of the internet, that's what I got from the talk. And I watched at least 30 minutes of it was that they are seeking to get full censorship and control of every single social media platform out there. And they are desperately trying to get people on board to go along with this insane concept. So I'm gonna get into this article here, which I thought was quite poignant and quite accurate. Royal biographer Hugo Vickers said, he no doubt thought he had found himself a very exotic and glamorous wife out of the norm. Actresses can be very beguiling. Unfortunately, he finds himself now living in California, away from his family, friends, his work and the army and all the things he had known. He looks incredibly unhappy and has been hooked by a political activist as far as I can see, adding that the prince is spouting all this rubbish which comes from her and he may think he believes it, but he doesn't really. The sensational claims come as Harry and Meghan blasted dangerous social media during a special time 100 talk alongside celeb pals. And I was quite surprised to see Serena Williams's husband talking to them. I guess he just wanted to kind of bury the hatchet. There was some speculation that Meghan and Serena Williams didn't have a relationship. It seems as though maybe they're working on healing their rift. So the article carries on to say, Harry has started swapping English words for American alternatives only seven months after moving to live in California. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex chatted with digital experts about improving online communities during a Time 100 Talks web chat. Harry 36 wearing a jacket and shirt without a tie used the American phrase pop the hood instead of the traditional Queen's English bonnet. So he's definitely trying to adopt her lifestyle. A lot of people have said that everything that Harry said had been scripted by Meghan and she was in full control. But this is the first time that I saw quite a lot of insecure body language from Meghan. She definitely looked like she was nervous and she looked as though she was unsure where he is emotionally in the marriage. As Harry was talking at the beginning of the talk, Meghan was obviously giving him that doughy-eyed look, but she looked kind of like she was looking for some reassurance and he looked very authoritative. When Meghan was speaking, on the other hand, Harry was giving her minimal eye contact, which is rare. He looked fed up, he looked frustrated and he looked really peed off. It seems as though they've been going through a lot behind the scenes and it's starting to really grate at them. And I think that where their marriage is possibly nearing a crisis, they feel as though if they can achieve the censorship of the internet, they'll be a happy pair. Some body language experts have also said that Megan herself also looked like she was in distress. And I definitely saw that. She looked quite distressed when Harry was speaking and she didn't look 100% comfortable like she always is. I did notice that this time she had given him more of the seat. And I think after her last speech, she looked as though she was really trying to be careful with her P's and Q's not to mess up and it seems as though Harry has said to her, I think that I should take some control over what it is exactly you're going to say because it's not working. There's this article by The Express and it is titled Meghan Markle's emotional body language shows 
distress in rare appearance with Harry. Judy James revealed why some topics may have left the royals distressed. During the talks, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex shared their own experiences as well as asking guests questions. Looking at their body language, Judy James suggested this revealed a lot of emotion from the couple. She told Express, Harry and Meghan appeared both alone and the experts suggested Meghan was able to get across her genuine passion for making a change. However, sitting beside Harry, Meghan again signalled her distress at some of the themes by placing her hands over her face and first pursing her lips before biting them. This reaction from the mother of one could have been prompted by her personal experience of the topics discussed, Judy suggested. I did see that, but I definitely saw a lot more insecurity in Meghan's face. And I saw a lot of frustration in Harry's body language, which is not a surprise, really. They get dragged on a daily basis. A lot of people do not like them and it's no secret and no one makes a secret of it. Whether you are a regular person like us or you are an A-lister, they get dragged and they have people who really are not fans. So... That's where I'm going to leave the video. This is just a light-hearted insight because there's so much that is coming out regarding this Times 100 talk hosting that they did. So I'll probably be back with another analysis. I'll be back with another video. Bye, guys.